This is the CPM Podcast. Digital Marketing Stories. I'm Jay Zagami. On an early Sunday morning back in 2010, April Dunford was sitting at the Dark Horse Espresso Bar in Toronto working on her laptop. By quarter of 11, her laptop was running out of power, so she was looking for a power outlet. She looked around, she saw there was one, but it was being used by the customers. She got frustrated and vented on Twitter. You run a cafe. About 50% of your customers are working on laptops. You have one electrical outlet. I'm talking about you, Mr. Dark Horse. Five hours later, the Dark Horse replied. They wrote, April Dunford, that's awesome. We're in the coffee business, not the office business. We have plenty of outlets to do what we need. That better be some damn good coffee. So while everyone's focusing on the poor customer service from the Dark Horse, Scott Stratton was focusing on something else. If I owned a cafe near the Dark Horse, I would have had an outlet with April's name on it, taken a picture, and tweeted it out to her with an invitation for a coffee on the house. People are online right now talking about you and your competition. Are you listening? No, most people aren't. I think that a lot of people haven't updated the way they view marketing and communications. This is Alex Silverman. He's the director of social media at Monster.com. We have these incredibly powerful and public platforms where you can talk to millions of people, uh, which is incredible, but also millions of people can talk to you and about you. You can hear those conversations. You can interject into those conversations especially on Twitter, I'd say more so than any other platform where there's almost an expectation that a brand is going to be present in the conversation, that it's going to listen to customer complaints, react to them, and look for opportunities to surprise and delight. It makes it a a really hard platform to get right, uh, but it's also really powerful when you do. You gotta go, you gotta search hashtags like fitness, things of that nature, in your radius. Most of you guys will recognize his uh, voice is Gary V. He's on the street, he bumps into a personal trainer, and the trainer asks him for some advice, how to grow his following uh, using social media. So Gary starts telling him, hey, hop on Twitter, and this is how you're gonna do it. So within a 20 mile radius of this place, let me show you, let me show you. So like literally you go into here, and you type in fitness, right? Mm -hmm. And you go into the tags, right? And you hit that, Okay. right? Right. And now, you need to like look at people's stuff, gotcha. really consume it, and then leave a comment like, yo bro, that's doing it right. Gotcha. You need to become part of the community, okay. not just pushing out. If you go hard. Spotify and Campbell's Soup do a really good job of this. So they have monitoring apps set up like Hootsuite, for instance, and they'll monitor Twitter conversations that mention them, mention their competitors, or really clever terms people are talking about that they can riff off. For example, last week, Deanna Batista tweeted, my office is freezing, I need gloves and a beanie. Campbell Soup was monitoring for terms such as being cold or sick or not feeling good, and they saw her tweet. So what do they do? They write her back, and they send her a free bowl of Campbell Soup. Totally unexpected, she was thrilled. It's not always about free stuff, though. This is Jeff Lesser. He's the product marketing manager at Twitter, and he's talking at their annual developer conference. As the airline, you might be able to reach out to someone who says that they're traveling across the country for a sibling's wedding and give them fun tips of what they could do or a smart way to pack a suit. Jeff goes on to talk about how companies who've developed social care capabilities on Twitter see a year-over-year revenue per contact grow 6%. So it's not just about satisfaction, it also impacts your bottom line. Companies that don't have customer service capabilities on Twitter, they see a decrease in year-over-year revenue per contact to 12%. That's an 18-point swing on your bottom line. Twitter is significantly more effective for doing customer service. Call center costs about $6 for every resolution. On Twitter, it's only a dollar, which means for every customer you can transfer away from your call center to engage with you on Twitter, you can save $5. Here's a tweet from someone who's praising Verizon for their great customer service. It was seen 36,000 times. When's the last time a phone call of customer service was heard by 36,000 people? And more importantly, when was the phone call of great customer service heard by 36,000 people? If 
you'd like to see exactly how to use that search function on Twitter, head over to our website, seedling.marketing. We have a slideshow under this episode that takes you through it step by step. I want to thank Alex Silverman of monster.com for coming on the show. I want to thank you guys for listening. It's our first ever episode, so I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to these. I'm going to post every Wednesday. And if you'd like to subscribe, we're on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, and a few others coming soon. And once you've learned how to use that search function, come find me on Twitter, at Jason Zagami. You'll have to figure out how to spell that. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next week. Yeah.